How did you feel different after someone very close to you went away? Have you ever thought about how Buddhist ideas can make you feel better when you're sad? Can learning what Buddha said help us when we miss someone a lot? Remember these questions as we talk. I'd love to hear what you think, so please write in the comments. And don't forget to watch all the way to the end of the video to find the answers. We're starting with our first part. Learning that things always change helps us when we lose someone. Stay with us to find out how Buddhism can help in hard times. Losing someone we love is one of the hardest things we face in life. It can make us feel lost and really sad. But there's a way to look at this that can help us feel a bit better. This way comes from Buddhism, and it's about understanding that everything in life, including the time we have with people, changes and doesn't last forever. This idea is called impermanence. Think about the flowers in a garden. They bloom, they're beautiful for a while, and then they fade away. This is natural and happens to everything around us. Our lives are like this too. People come into our lives, we make memories with them, and then sometimes they have to go. It's tough, but it's a normal part of life. Buddha taught us that this constant change is actually a part of the beauty of life. It helps us appreciate the moments we have. When we understand that nothing lasts forever, we start to cherish every moment. It's like when you see a rainbow. You know it won't be there for long, so you really take in its beauty while you can. Remembering the good times with someone we've lost can bring us comfort. It's okay to feel sad, but we can also smile thinking about the happy moments we shared. This balance is what impermanence teaches us. It doesn't make the sadness disappear, but it helps us understand and accept our feelings. So, when we feel down about losing someone, it's important to be kind to ourselves. We need to let ourselves feel the sadness, but also remember to think about the good times. This balance can make the tough times a little easier to handle. Buddhism also talks about how everything and everyone is connected. So even when someone is no longer with us, the love and memories we have keep us connected. We carry a part of them with us in our hearts and memories. Now here are three questions for you to think about. Can you remember a time when understanding that things change helped you feel better about losing someone? What are some happy memories you have of someone you miss? How do you make the most of the time you have with the people you care about? Please share your thoughts in the comments. It's really helpful to hear how other people deal with these things. And remember, if this topic speaks to you, show your support by liking, sharing, and subscribing. In our next part, we'll explore being kind to yourself and others when you're sad. Stay with us to learn more about how kindness can help us in sad times. When we lose someone important, it's not just the sadness that's hard. Sometimes, we can be tough on ourselves without even realizing it. Buddhism teaches us something really important during these times. The power of kindness, both to ourselves and to others. Think about how you talk to a friend who is feeling really sad. You'd probably be gentle, understanding, and supportive, right? Now how do you talk to yourself when you're the one who's sad? Often we forget to give ourselves the same kindness we offer to others. Buddhism encourages us to be as kind to ourselves as we would be to a good friend. This means allowing ourselves to feel sad, giving ourselves time to heal, and remembering it's okay not to be okay. It also means doing small things that make us feel a bit better, like spending time in nature, enjoying our favorite food, or just resting. These acts of kindness to ourselves are really important. Buddhism also talks about how being kind to others can help us when we're grieving. When we help someone else, even in a small way, it can make us feel better too. It could be as simple as listening to someone sharing a meal with a neighbor or just being there for a friend. These acts of kindness create a ripple effect, making both us and the people around us feel a bit better. In times of loss, Communities often come together, 
sharing stories, support, and comfort. This sense of community is a big part of healing. Being with others who understand what we're going through can be really comforting. It reminds us we're not alone. Remember, everyone grieves differently, and that's okay. Some people might want to talk about their feelings, while others might need some quiet time. Respecting these differences is another way of being kind. Now, I'd love to hear from you. What's one way you've been kind to yourself when feeling sad? Can you share a time when being kind to someone else made you feel better? How does being around others help you when you're going through a tough time? Please share your answers in the comments. Your stories can really help others who are watching. Next, we'll discuss finding peace in the moment, mindfulness during grief. Join us to learn how staying in the present can help during hard times. Sometimes when we're very sad, especially after losing someone, our minds get really busy with lots of thoughts. There's a helpful way, taught by Buddhism, to find a bit of calm in these hard times. It's called mindfulness. This means paying attention to what's happening right now, right where we are, without thinking about stuff that happened before or what might happen later. Mindfulness can be really simple. One way to do it is by focusing on your breathing. When you feel lots of thoughts and sadness, try to breathe slowly and deeply. Notice how the air feels coming in and going out. This can help quiet your mind and bring you back to right now. You can also be mindful by paying attention to everyday things. Like when you eat, try to really taste your food. Or when you walk, feel your feet touching the ground. Doing this helps you not get too lost in sad thoughts. Buddha taught us that being mindful helps us see our thoughts and feelings are always changing. They're like clouds in the sky. They're there and then they move on. Did our videos help you? You can support to our creators by clicking the thanks button under the video. We really appreciate it. It helps our channel a lot. Thank you. Knowing this can make our sadness a bit easier to handle. It shows us that how we feel right now won't always stay the same. Mindfulness also helps us see the good things that are still around us, even when we're sad. It might be something small, like a sunny day, talking with a friend, or just a quiet moment. These little things can give us some happiness and peace. It's important to be patient with ourselves. Mindfulness doesn't stop us from feeling sad, but it can help us deal with our feelings better. It's like giving ourselves a little bit of care when things are tough. Now here are three questions for you to think about. Have you ever tried being mindful when you felt really sad? What was it like? Is there something small that makes you feel a bit better even on sad days? How do you keep your mind on now when you keep thinking about sad stuff? It would be great to see your answers in the comments. Talking about these things can help all of us. And if you find this talk useful, please hit the like button, share it, and subscribe for more. Next, we're going to talk about learning from loss, how grief can teach us. Stick around to find out how going through tough times can actually teach us important things. Losing someone we care about is really hard. It makes us feel sad and sometimes alone. But even in these tough times, we can learn something important. Buddhism shows us that even when we're grieving, there are lessons we can learn. One big lesson is about how strong we really are. When we go through something as hard as losing someone, we find out we can handle more than we thought. It's like discovering a hidden strength inside us. Grief also teaches us about the love and connections we have with others. Sometimes when someone is no longer with us, we understand even more how much they meant to us. We start to see how they changed our lives and how the love we shared keeps going even when they're gone. Another thing we learn is to value the time we have with people we love. Knowing that we won't have them around forever makes the time we spend with them even more special. We learn to really be there in the moment with our friends and family. Buddha said that life is full of changes and challenges. Grief is one of these challenges, but it also brings wisdom. We start to understand life better and see things in a new way. 
It's like seeing a new part of a picture we didn't notice before. Grieving can also teach us to be kinder and more understanding. When we know how it feels to lose someone, we can really understand what others are going through. This can make us more caring and helpful to people around us. It's also a time when we can grow in our beliefs and spirituality. We might find comfort in our faith or spiritual practices. This can make us feel a bit more at peace and give us hope. Now here are three questions for you. What's something you learned about yourself when you were grieving? How has losing someone changed the way you think about your relationships? What's one way your grief has helped you grow or see things differently? Please share your thoughts in the comments. Hearing from each other can be really comforting. Coming up next, we'll explore the power of sharing stories, healing through connection. Join us to see how sharing our experiences can help us and others feel better. Dealing with the loss of someone we love is a tough part of life. Sometimes it can make us feel really alone. But one thing that can help us during these hard times is sharing our stories. This is something Buddhism encourages too. Connecting with others and talking about our experiences. When we lose someone, we carry so many memories and feelings inside us. Talking about the person we miss can be a way of keeping their memory alive. It's like they're still here with us in some way. When we share stories, we can remember all the good times. We might talk about funny things they did or just special moments we had together. This doesn't just keep their memory alive, but also brings out the smiles and laughter, helping us celebrate their life, not just mourn their absence. There's also something really special about saying how we feel out loud. It can be hard to put our feelings into words, but when we do, it often makes things a bit clearer. We start to understand our own feelings better. And sometimes, we realize we're not the only ones feeling this way. Other people have felt similar things, and they get it. They understand what we're going through. Hearing from someone else who has been through a similar loss can be really comforting. They might share how they got through their tough times, or just offer a kind word or a listening ear. This can make a big difference when we're feeling down. It reminds us that we're part of a bigger community, and we're not alone in our sadness. In many Buddhist communities, people come together to share stories and support each other. This sharing is a way of healing. It's like we're all helping each other carry our sadness. When we connect with others, it's like building a bridge from our heart to theirs. It helps us feel understood and less alone. But it's important to remember that it's okay not to want to talk sometimes. Everyone deals with grief in their own way. Some people find comfort in writing down their thoughts in a journal or expressing themselves through art or music. These can be other ways of sharing your story, even if it's just with yourself. Another beautiful part of sharing stories is how it helps keep traditions and cultures alive. In many cultures, there are special ways of remembering those who have passed away. These traditions are often about sharing stories, like during certain ceremonies or on special days. When we take part in these traditions, we connect not only with our loved ones, but also with our culture and history. It's a way of feeling connected to something bigger than us. Now let's reflect on these questions. Do you have a favorite story about someone you've lost that you like to share with others? How does talking about your feelings, or even just writing them down, change how you feel? Have you ever found comfort in hearing someone else's story about their loss? What was it that helped you? Your stories and experiences are really valuable, so please share them in the comments. It helps all of us to hear how different people deal with loss. And if you're finding this discussion helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more. In our next segment, we'll explore finding comfort in rituals and traditions. Join us to discover how certain practices and traditions can provide comfort and a sense of connection during times of grief. When we lose someone we care about, sometimes doing certain things like little rituals or following traditions can really help us feel a bit better. Buddhism, which has been around for a long time, 
tells us that these kinds of practices are good for healing and remembering the people we miss. Let's think about the simple things we might do to keep someone's memory alive. Maybe you light a candle for them, go to their favorite park, or listen to a song they loved. These aren't just things we do. They're special ways to honor and remember them. In lots of places in the world, people have their own ways to remember those who have passed away. These ways are often part of their culture or religion. For example, some people might get together for a special ceremony on certain days to think about their loved ones. At these times, they might do things like put out flowers, light special smells like incense, or tell stories about the person they're remembering. These traditions are really helpful because they give us a way to feel close to the person we've lost. They also connect us with other people and our own history, showing us we're part of a big family of people. This feeling of being connected can make us feel less alone when we're sad. In Buddhism, doing things like meditating can also be a way to help us when we're sad. Sitting quietly, focusing on breathing, or saying special words over and over can make us feel calm. It's a way to take time to think, remember, and start to feel a bit better. But it's not just the old ways that matter. Making your own special ways to remember someone can mean a lot too. Maybe you write them a letter even though they can't read it, or plant a flower or a tree for them. These things we make up ourselves can be really powerful for helping us deal with our feelings and keeping the person's memory alive. Now, here are three questions for you to think about. Are there any special things you do to remember someone you've lost? How do these actions make you feel when you're missing that person? Have you ever made up your own special way to honor someone you remember? What was it? I'd love to see your answers in the comments. It's really interesting to hear how different people remember the people they care about. Next, we're going to talk about the role of community in healing grief. Stick with us to find out how being with other people can help us when we're feeling really sad. When we're feeling really sad because we've lost someone, sometimes being around other people can make a big difference. This is something Buddhism talks about a lot, how being part of a community can help us when we're going through tough times. Think about how it feels when you're with friends or family who care about you. They might not be able to take away all the sadness, but just being with them can make you feel a little less alone. Sometimes just having someone listen to us, give us a hug, or sit with us in silence can be really comforting. In many places, when someone passes away, people come together. They might cook meals for the family, help with things around the house, or just be there to offer support. This is a way of showing that in hard times, people don't have to be alone. Everyone helps each other out. In Buddhist communities, there's a strong sense of being there for each other. People might come together to meditate, chant, or just talk about how they're feeling. These gatherings are not just about feeling sad. They're about sharing love, support, and understanding. It's like having a big family that's there for you. Being part of a group can also help us see our own loss in a different way. When we hear others talk about their feelings and experiences, we might find things that are similar to our own. This can help us understand our own feelings better. It also shows us that grieving is a normal part of life that everyone goes through. But it's also okay if sometimes you want to be alone. Grieving is very personal and everyone does it in their own way. The important thing is to do what feels right for you. Now, I have three questions for you. Have you ever felt better after spending time with friends or family when you were sad? Is there a group or community that helped you when you were grieving? What does being with others give you that being alone doesn't? Please share your thoughts in the comments. It's really helpful to hear how other people find comfort. And if you like our talks, please hit the like button, share with others, and subscribe for more. Coming up next, we'll talk about finding strength in memories. Join us to learn how our memories can be a source of strength and comfort. When someone we really care about is no longer with us, thinking about the times we shared with them can be really special. Buddhism teaches us that things in life always change. 
but our memories of people can help us feel stronger and less sad. Just remembering the fun or happy times can make us smile. It's like having a bit of happiness even on a sad day. These memories might be about little things, maybe a funny thing they said, a day you spent together, or just the way they laughed. Looking at old photos, watching videos, or even sitting quietly and thinking about them can make us feel like they're still close to us, in our hearts. We can chat with them in our thoughts, share what's happening in our lives, or just think about how they made us feel good. Our memories also help us keep the spirit of the person alive. We remember what they taught us, the love they shared, or the dreams they had. This can make us want to live better. Maybe by being kinder to others, following our dreams, or just being thankful for each day. It's also really nice to share these memories with other people. When we tell our friends or family about the good times we had with the person we miss, it makes those memories stronger. It's like we're keeping the story of that person going for everyone, but it's normal to feel both happy and sad about our memories. Sometimes thinking about the person we've lost can make us feel really sad, and that's okay. We should let ourselves feel whatever we're feeling. There's no right or wrong way to feel about a memory. Now let's think about these questions. What's a happy memory you have of someone you've lost? What do you do to keep the memory of that person going? How do your memories of them help you every day? I'd really like to see your answers in the comments. Talking about our memories can be a really nice way to remember someone. Next, we're going to talk about embracing change, moving forward while remembering. Stick around to find out how we can keep living our lives while still holding on to our memories. In life, one thing is always true. Things change. This can be really clear to us when we lose someone we love. Buddhism teaches us about embracing this change, even when it's hard. It tells us that moving forward and remembering the ones we've lost can go hand in hand. Moving forward doesn't mean we forget the person who's not here anymore. It's about keeping their memory alive in our hearts as we go on with our lives. The things they taught us, the love they shared, and what they enjoyed can guide us in our daily lives. Let's say the person you miss loved nature. You could remember them by spending time in places they loved, like a park, a garden, or by the sea. If they were someone who liked helping others, Maybe you could help out at a charity or do something kind for someone, just like they might have done. Doing these things is like carrying a piece of them with you. It's also about letting ourselves be happy and enjoy new things, even though they're not here with us. This might feel hard at first, but it's okay to give yourself the chance to laugh, have fun, and make new memories. It doesn't mean you don't miss them. It just means you're finding a way to live a full life while holding on to their memory. Buddha talked about how life is always changing, and that means we change too. As time passes, it's natural for our feelings to shift. You might start to feel a little less sad, maybe find some peace, and begin to think about the future more. Remember, there's no set time for when you should start feeling better. Everyone feels grief differently, and that's perfectly okay. It's about taking small steps forward and being kind to yourself along the way. Another part of moving forward can be finding new hobbies or interests. Maybe there's something you've always wanted to try, but never got around to. This can be a way to bring new joy into your life and make you feel connected to the world again. And sometimes, it's about the people who are still in our lives. Spending time with friends and family, sharing stories and making new memories together can remind us that life still has a lot to offer. It's about finding joy in the present while still cherishing the past. Now, let's think about these questions. What's something from the person you've lost that you've brought into your life like a hobby or an interest? How do you find the right balance between remembering them and enjoying your life now? Is there a change you've made since they passed away that's helped you move forward in a positive way? I'd love to see your answers in the comments. Sharing our ways of coping can be really helpful to others. And if you're finding these talks useful, please like, share, and subscribe for more.
Up next, we'll talk about the healing power of helping others. Stay with us to discover how reaching out to help others can be a part of our own healing journey in times of grief. Sometimes, when we're going through a really tough time like losing someone we love, one of the best things we can do is help other people. It might seem surprising, but helping others can actually help us heal too. This is something Buddhism has always taught. Being kind and giving to others can make our hearts feel a bit lighter. When you do something nice for someone else, it can take your mind off your own sadness for a little while. It can be simple things like making a meal for a friend, helping a neighbor with their garden, or just listening when someone needs to talk. These acts of kindness don't just make the other person feel good, they can make you feel good too. Helping others can also give us a sense of purpose and connection. It reminds us that we're all in this together and everyone goes through hard times. When we help others, we're building a community where people look out for each other. This can be really comforting, especially when we're feeling alone in our grief. In Buddhism, there's a big focus on compassion and empathy. When we're compassionate, we understand and feel what others are going through. And when we act on that compassion by helping, we're doing something really positive. It's like turning our own pain into something that can bring a bit of joy or relief to someone else. Also, helping others can make us feel closer to the person we've lost. Maybe they were the kind of person who always helped others. By doing the same, it's like we're keeping a part of them alive in our actions. It's a beautiful way to honor their memory. But remember, it's important to take care of yourself too. Helping others should never be so much that it makes you feel more stressed or tired. It's about finding the right balance. Now, here are three questions for you. Have you ever felt better after helping someone else? What did you do? How do you think being kind to others can help us when we're sad? Is there a way you've helped others that reminds you of the person you've lost? Please share your experiences in the comments. It's always inspiring to hear how kindness can make a difference. Next, we'll be looking at creating a legacy, keeping their spirit alive. Join us to explore how we can keep the spirit of our loved ones alive through our actions and choices. Whenever we lose someone really important to us, it's natural to think about how to keep their memory alive. One of the best ways to do this is by creating a legacy that reflects what they stood for and cared about. This doesn't have to be about doing big things. Often it's the smaller, more personal actions that can mean the most. Let's think about what mattered to the person you've lost. Maybe they had a love for animals, a talent for painting, or a heart for helping those in need. You can honor their spirit by engaging in activities that resonate with their passions. For instance, if they were animal lovers, perhaps volunteering at an animal shelter or adopting a pet could be a way to keep their memory alive. Creating a legacy can also mean sharing the stories and lessons you learned from them. This could involve telling friends, family, or even others who didn't know them about the kind of person they were, the things they did, and how they've influenced your life. By doing this, you're not just keeping their memory alive, you're also passing on their wisdom and values, making sure their influence continues to ripple through the lives of others. In Buddhism, everything is connected. This belief tells us that when we do things in memory of someone, it's more than just a tribute. It's a way of maintaining a deep and lasting connection with them. Even though they're not physically here, their impact and presence can still be felt in what we do and the choices we make. Another aspect of creating a legacy is how we live our own lives. It's about embodying the qualities that we admired in them. Were they kind, courageous, optimistic, or always ready to lend a hand? By living with these qualities ourselves, we're weaving their essence into our daily lives, keeping their spirit alive not just in memory, but in action. It's important to remember that creating a legacy isn't about grand gestures. It's deeply personal, reflecting your unique relationship with the person you've lost. It's about the meaning these actions hold for you and the comfort and connection they bring. 
Reflecting on how to keep their spirit alive can also be a way of navigating through your grief. It turns the focus from loss to celebration, celebrating their life, their impact, and the ways they have enriched your own life. It can be a powerful way of processing your feelings and finding a path forward. Now, let's consider these questions. What were some things that were really important to the person you lost? And how might you honor these in your own life? Do you have any stories or lessons from them that you share with others? What's a favorite story or lesson? What qualities of the person you've lost do you find yourself trying to embody or reflect in your own life? I'd really appreciate reading your thoughts and experiences in the comments. It's inspiring to hear how others honor and remember those they've lost. If you're finding these discussions helpful, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. In our next topic, Finding New Paths Growth After Loss, we'll explore how going through the experience of losing someone can lead to personal growth and new beginnings. Stay with us to uncover the ways in which grief can transform into a journey of discovery and growth. Losing someone we love is a deeply challenging experience, one that can change us in many ways. Yet, in this difficult journey, there can also be unexpected opportunities for growth and self-discovery. It might seem hard to believe, especially when the pain of loss is fresh. But grief can sometimes be the start of a new path, leading us to find strengths and joys we never knew before. When we're faced with the reality of loss, we often need to find ways to cope and make sense of our emotions. This process of coping can reveal a lot about who we are. We might discover an inner resilience we didn't know we had, or find strength in places we never expected. It's like being in the midst of a storm and realizing that we have the ability to endure and eventually find calm. This journey through grief can sometimes lead us to new interests and hobbies. For instance, in seeking ways to ease our sadness, we might start a new exercise routine, discover a passion for painting, or begin exploring nature more. These new activities can become a source of comfort and happiness, filling a part of our lives with something meaningful and joyful. Buddhism teaches us about the impermanence of life and how change is a constant part of our existence. When we embrace new paths after a loss, we're flowing with the natural changes of life. It's about finding ways to continue growing, learning and evolving, even when we are surrounded by grief. Often, the experience of loss can lead us to reevaluate our life goals and priorities. What we previously thought was important might shift as we find ourselves drawn to new passions or causes. This isn't about forgetting the past, but allowing our experiences of loss to shape us into who we are becoming. Additionally, our journey through loss can open up new ways to connect with others. This might mean joining a support group where you can share your experiences, volunteering for a cause that's meaningful to you, or simply spending more time with friends and family. These new connections can bring support, friendship, and a sense of belonging in a time when we might feel most isolated. In the process of navigating our grief, we may also find new perspectives on life. We might start appreciating the small moments more, find gratitude in everyday experiences, or develop a deeper empathy for others who are going through tough times. It's like our loss, as painful as it is, broadens our understanding of life and deepens our connection to the world around us. But it's important to remember that there's no set timeline for this journey. Everyone's path of growth after loss is unique, and it's entirely okay to take it at your own pace. There's no need to rush or feel pressured to move on in a certain way. Being patient and gentle with yourself is crucial as you explore these new paths and adapt to the changes in your life. Now consider these reflective questions. Since experiencing your loss, have you discovered any new strengths or interests that have surprised you? How has your perspective on life, your values or your priorities shifted after losing someone close to you? In what ways have you reached out and connected with others or your community during your grieving process? 
How has this impacted you? I encourage you to share your thoughts and experiences in the comments. It can be incredibly helpful and inspiring to hear how others have navigated their own paths of growth after loss. In our next segment, Hope and Healing Looking to the Future, we'll explore how to maintain hope and work towards healing as we look forward to the future. Join us to discover ways to cultivate hope and find healing in our lives. Facing the future after losing someone dear to us can seem daunting. However, an essential part of our journey through grief is learning to look ahead with a sense of hope. Hope doesn't erase our sadness, but it can light our way, helping us to find paths of healing and to gradually start building our lives anew with the memory of our loved ones carried in our hearts. Hope is like a gentle light in a dark room. It doesn't make the pain of loss vanish, but it does show us that there can be a path forward. It's about believing that better days are possible, even amidst our sadness. This belief isn't about forgetting the one we've lost. Rather, it's about honoring their memory by embracing life, by finding a way to carry their legacy forward into our future. One way to foster hope is by setting small, achievable goals. This could be anything from starting a new hobby, planning a day out with friends, or learning something new. Each small achievement can bring a sense of progress and remind us that life still holds many possibilities for joy and fulfillment. Finding hope also means allowing ourselves to experience happiness and laughter again. It's okay to enjoy life, to celebrate moments, and to embrace the good that still exists around us. This isn't a betrayal of the memory of the one we've lost. Instead, it's a testament to the enduring power of love and the resilience of the human spirit. Buddhism emphasizes the importance of living in the present moment. While planning for the future is natural, it's also vital to stay grounded in the now. This means appreciating the simple joys of everyday life, the laughter of a child, the beauty of a sunset, the comfort of a good meal. These moments, though small, can be profound sources of healing and hope. Healing from a loss is a personal journey and it varies greatly from person to person. Some days might feel overwhelming and others might bring a sense of peace. Healing isn't linear. It comes with its own ebbs and flows. The important thing is to be patient and compassionate with yourself as you navigate through this process. As we heal, we often find strength in reaching out to others who are on similar paths. Sharing our stories, offering a listening ear, or simply being there can be therapeutic, not just for them, but also for us. It transforms our own experiences of loss into avenues of support and connection. It's also about finding new meanings and purposes in life. As we adapt to the changes brought by our loss, we may find ourselves drawn to new causes, activities, or relationships that enrich our lives in unexpected ways. This doesn't mean we're moving on from our loved one, but rather moving forward with them in our hearts. And as we look to the future, it's important to remember that there's no prescribed way to heal or to find hope. Each person's journey is unique shaped by their experiences, relationships, and the nature of their loss. Consider these reflective questions. What are small things in your daily life that bring you a sense of hope or joy? How do you find a balance between cherishing the memories of the person you've lost and embracing happiness in your current life? Can you think of a positive change or a new perspective that has emerged in your life through your healing process? Please share your experiences and insights in the comments. Your stories can provide comfort and hope to others going through similar experiences. If you found value in our series, we invite you to like, share, and subscribe for more meaningful discussions. Thank you for being part of this journey with us, exploring the paths of understanding, coping, and healing in grief. We hope these discussions have brought you some comfort and guidance 
and we encourage you to keep seeking and embracing hope and healing in your life. Conclusion and Final Thoughts As we wrap up our talks about dealing with grief using Buddhism's ideas, let's take a moment to think about all we've talked about. We've covered many different parts of dealing with losing someone, like understanding that everything changes, finding comfort in our memories, helping others to feel better, and keeping hope for the future. Remember, it's okay to feel sad, and it's okay to take your time when you're grieving. Everyone feels and heals in their own way. The most important thing is to be kind to yourself and let yourself heal step by step. We've learned from Buddhism that things in life are always changing, and that's just how life works. Being kind to ourselves and others can really help when we're sad. Staying in the moment can help us appreciate what we have, even when times are tough. Talking with others who understand what we're going through can be a big help too. Sharing our stories and listening to others can make us feel like we're not alone. It can give us strength and comfort to know others are going through similar things. And when we think about the future, it's good to have hope. Hope doesn't mean we forget our sadness, but it helps us keep going. We remember the good times with the people we've lost and take those memories with us into whatever comes next. As you keep going on your own path, Remember that healing takes time. It's about learning how to live with the loss and letting it be a part of your life in a good way. To finish, I'd like to ask you a few more questions. What's the biggest thing you've learned about dealing with sadness from our talks? How have these talks changed? How you think about losing someone? What are some things you plan to do to keep healing and growing? Feel free to write your answers in the comments. Sharing what you think can help others, too. And if you liked our talks, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your support helps us reach more people who might find these talks helpful. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Even when times are hard, there's always a bit of light somewhere. We wish you peace, healing, and hope as you keep moving forward. Did our videos help you? You can support to our creators by clicking the thanks button under the video. We really appreciate it. It helps our channel a lot. Thank you.